Hi, everyone. Welcome to Northview's virtual information session on how to apply to Ontario universities. So first of all, uh, we, we do want to make sure all grade 12 students join the grade 12 guidance Google classroom. The code is there. Uh, we'll be putting it up a couple more times over the presentation. Also, this presentation is being recorded and it will be posted. So please just focus on the content as it's coming. And if you need to refer back, uh, you can just see the recording. Now it's not going. There we go. So we'll start with the land acknowledgement. We acknowledge we are hosted on the lands of the Mississaugas of the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee Confederacy and the Wendat. We also recognize the enduring presence of all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples. So we're going to start this off with our frequently asked questions. Uh, so first of all, important dates. Uh, we do have a document called OCAS and UAC 2021-22 uh, timelines. So on the first page are the college dates uh, and second page are the university dates. So these are posted in the grade 12 guidance Google Classroom and also at northviewheights.ca guidance and then post-secondary education. So among the important dates are the mark transmission dates. So uh, basically after every uh, report card. There are transmissions that update the universities with marks and any course updates you have and anything else, including if you change your address or anything like that through this school. So it all comes from our uh, from Trillium, which is our program that holds all of the school information, contact information, scheduling, courses, transcript. And June 30th is the last transmission of the school year, the regular school year, which has the final marks and proof of graduation. And it is that transmission that the universities will be confirming their admission offers of admission. So continuing on, we do have January 13th is in a very important date. That is the application deadline for equal consideration. What this means is that if you apply before or by January 13th, and we recommend doing it well before so that uh, you don't get backlogged with issues of too many people trying to do it last minute, apply before January 13th and you will be considered equally for all the programs that you apply to. If you apply afterwards, then you, may only, you will only be considered if there's still space. So please mind that deadline, January 13th. And also a wonderful time to get the application done is during our two week winter break. It's good timing. Uh, also May 27th is, this is a deadline that the universities have to give a response to you about your application. Assuming that is if you've applied by January 13th. And then June 1st is the first date that a university can ask for a commitment of some kind from you. Also, uh, we do want to stress that if you are considering summer school to increase an average to meet a conditional offer, so let's say at the semester two midterms or hopefully a little before maybe, uh, you do will you really will need to contact your guidance counselor to make sure that we have uh, a contingency plan with the university and see if that can be arranged. When should I apply for OSAP? This is a question we get a lot. So the good news is that you don't have to worry about that right now. May and June is the best time to apply because you do need to know which program you're going to be attending. And then if you get your application done by the end of June, your money will be ready for going to the university in September before your tuition is due. And we will also be having an OSAP information session on March 2nd. And 
And oh, the other thing about OSAP is it's a really, uh, when, when you are applying, we will not really be able to help you. You will be wanting to contact the financial aid office of your university. So what role do grade 11 courses and marks play in particularly the early admission process? So first of all, you must have your six grade 12 U or M. So four U or four M is in the course code scheduled into your courses and they must be completed by June and they must include any prerequisite courses for the program. So on uh, to be considered for admission. So that's the first step. Uh, also, universities will make conditional offers of admission throughout the year based on the students available grade 12 marks and uh, a lot of universities do consider grade 11 marks when the grade 12 marks are not available yet. If students do not have strong grade 11 marks, universities will continue to consider the application as grade 12 marks become available. Therefore, the grade 11 marks will not hinder your chance to be considered for admission. Some universities also prefer to wait until April, uh, which would be the semester two midterm mark transmission to make the majority of their decisions. So while we do notice that some, some students are getting some earlier offers, a lot are held back until April. So try not to panic, I know it's stressful. Another question we get is, is it a problem that I have English or another prerequisite course in semester two? And the answer is no, this is not a problem as this is pretty much the case for almost every student. And universities will, again, be having these consideration rounds uh, based on each transmission when new information is available. So please note that it does also take weeks for the universities to process all this new information. So even though they may, it may take a few weeks for them to um, register what's been gotten from, from your remarks and give an, off, an offer. Uh, another question is, since we do have a lot of newcomers, new people to Canada, is about the English language proficiency test. So tests like TOEFL and IELTS are, uh, are, generally, consi are generally considered for this requirement. So first you must look up the student's English requirement criteria. Generally students do not have to submit results for one of these tests if students have been here for four years of full-time study at in high school in Canada. Though if you did have ESL as part of your four years, you may not qualify. You may need to take the uh, pro English proficiency test. Or, or maybe you studied in a country where English is the first language or studied where English is the primary language of instruction. So if you are, are at all unsure after researching the criteria, uh, the, uh, yeah, the criteria, then you please do contact the university directly. Uh, and so this is where you can find the language requirements and we will be going over that in our research section. So for the university applications, you will be applying on ouac.on.ca. Northview students will be using the 101 application. So this is for students who are currently enrolled in full-time secondary, uh, yeah, full-time high school. Uh, and Northview will be providing pins. Well, we've already um, given the envelopes to many of our students. They are available for students to pick up in the guidance office if they still, if you still do not have it. We will also be providing the student mark transmissions you will be using your PIN number. Uh, so if you ha don't have it yet, please go to guidance. If you're not, if you are a virtual student, uh, check your TSB email because we have sent them to the virtual students. And if there's still an issue, please contact your guidance counselor. Another important uh, issue is that we need to know if you're taking any courses outside of TDSB. Uh, so this means, uh, if you're, sorry, uh, 
the final report card uh, we can put onto your transcript, but if you need the universities to know that you are enrolled in a particular course or the midterm mark, the, the private school must do that themselves. So credit counseling summary is something that the guidance counselors look at routinely and the students should be familiar with to make sure they are meeting graduation requirements. So community hours, there's three things that, that are needed to graduate. So one is community hours. For this year's graduates, again, the 40 hours that is normally required has been reduced to 20. The literacy requirement has been waived, so you don't have to worry about that. And of course, the 30 credits that we see across the bottom, you need the 30 credits to graduate, including 18 compulsory credits. And please note that if you do a repeat a course and pass it twice, you can only earn the credit once. And also again, the six 4U or 4M courses that are needed for application must be completed by June to be considered. So if you are still in need of community hours, because I, I did notice in September, there were a lot of grade 12 students in my alpha that have zero hours, which is understandable with COVID, but we do have uh, some information to help you out. We do have two uh, virtual uh, volunteer fairs. So we just had one recently and we have posted the recording of it and the contacts for the guidance for the volunteer opportunities both in the Guidance Google Classroom and again at northviewheights.ca under guidance and then volunteering. We will again have another one in spring, but I think that's making it a little bit late for getting your hours done. And if you need a volunteer form, we have hard copies just in the guidance office when you walk in at the, at the door. And we also have posted an editable PDF in Again, Guidance Google Classroom and on northviewheights.ca. And we would like all graduating students to have their hours submitted, 20 hours, by April 23rd, so that everything can be processed in time for their graduation. Researching university programs, Ms. PT. Hello, everybody. Ms. PT here. I'm going to be going over. Um, an important part of researching your programs. Hopefully most of you have started this at least, completed it preferably, uh, but just a refresher on how to use the, the research website in order to get your research done. So on the next slide, you can see that we have created a worksheet and this worksheet is available as a electronic copy in the Guidance Google Classroom, but we do also have hard copies available in Guidance as well, if you want to pick one of these up. Um, here it gives you space to write down important information about any of the programs that you're considering. So what university it's at, the program name, um, what kind of a degree it's offering, the program code, which is very important, and I will get into that in just a minute, and then a brief description of the, the program that you're looking at, any uh, prerequisites and things like that, um, and any other requirements that this program might um, need. So this is a really helpful way for you to sort of get everything done, get everything organized, so that when you go to the application uh, process, um, that you have everything ready to go and you're not scrambling while also trying to do your application. The website that we're going to be doing our research on is Ontario University's info.ca. This is not the same website that you're going to use to apply, as Ms. Dobbin will go over in just a minute. Um, so it is actually two separate websites. There's one website for researching, and then there's another uh, website that you apply for. So we're going to continue on to the Ontario University's um, website info and um, start doing our research. So on the back of the page that we that I just showed you, you will also have this kind of brief outline of the different steps that you need to go on. Um, sorry, that's just my daughter in the back there. Um, the different steps that you will need to complete in order to complete your application. And uh, on the bottom, the most important part there is we've given you some space to record your username that you're going to create, your password that you're going to create, 
and the OUAC reference number that um, OIAC is going to give you once you have completed your application. It is really, really important, and I can't say this strongly enough, that you record all of this information on the sheet or take screenshots of it or somehow otherwise make sure that you'll remember it because guidance has no way to access this information. I have had a number of students just personally in my alphabet who have come down in the last week or so. Um, they started their application. They've already forgotten what they put as their username or password. And unfortunately, I cannot help them. I have no way to access that information. So you have to deal directly with the OUAC to retrieve this information. And I can tell you that right now they're averaging a 48 hour response time, whether you leave them a message or a um, or you send them an email, most of my students are finding they are not getting back to you right away. So if you can avoid having to call the center for any reason, that would be preferable. So please do make sure you record this information. Once again, guidance cannot access this information for you. Okay, so moving on to the next page, this is the landing page for the Ontario University Information Site. And we're going to click on find a program. Um, in order to start our research. Once we get to the research page, there's two ways that you can uh, do your research. The first is by category, and the category is the first, back please, miss, sure. and the category is the first thing that will actually pop up. So the default actually takes you to this browse by category option. If you aren't sure exactly of the program, but you kind of know the field that you want to be in. So if you look on this first slide here, the very first thing that comes up is agriculture, food, forestry. Um, and you kind of know you want something to do with that, but you're not really 100% sure. All of the programs associated with that field are listed underneath. So you can see which uh, programs actually fall under which categories. The other way to search your course is if you know for sure that you, that you want to go to this particular program, you can go ahead and type it in the find a program search bar on the right hand side. We're going to go ahead and use life sciences as an example. It is a common one that we do get uh, in guidance. And you'll see that when we put in life sciences, we have 37 programs that are going to populate for us. The, you can then sort by different things, university names, et cetera, to narrow down your choices and to also bring the ones that you want to look at to the, to the front of the line. Now, this is a really useful, whoops, back please. No, miss, miss back, please. One more back, thank you. Now, this is a really, really useful feature that the um, website has for you. And this allows you to actually compare programs that are within the same field. So if I continue with my life sciences example, you will see that I've uh, chosen to select the first four programs that appeared at uh, Queens, Ontario Tech, uh, U of T, and at McMaster University. And I go ahead and select the compare and a red check mark goes up. Then when I go to show my comparisons, it's actually going to bring up all the detailed information about all those programs that I've selected so that I can easily see the differences between them. So under the um, compare by, if you select the all option, it's actually going to show you all the information that I have up on my screen here. So you'll see the grade range, the prerequisites, the residence cost for all of those different programs. And you can take a look and see what the um, what they have in common, what they have different. Maybe the residence cost at Queens will be a deciding factor for you over say the residence cost at um, Ontario Tech University. But it's a really nice way to compare programs within the same field very quickly. If you wanna search for, for different programs or look at them more individually in a little more detail, you can click on the uh, name of the program that you're interested in. So in this case, we're going to take a look at the paramedicine, which is a joint program with Centennial College, meaning that you will do some of your studying at Centennial and some of your studying at University of Toronto Scarborough. Once you click on the uh, title, it's then going to bring you to this screen here, which will allow you to look at the program in a little more detail. So the first part is the overview, which tells you 
you a little bit about this program. It shows you that you're going to get a Bachelor of Science, shows you the grade range is 80, et cetera. The most important thing, in my opinion, on this page is that OUAC program code. So as you can see in the green circle here, every university uh, program is assigned a code. If you write that code down in the in the spot on your chart that we've provided for you, when you go to add that program uh, during your application, it's going to be much easier and much faster for you to get all your program choices in. Otherwise, you're going to have to go through the, the search option during the application and try to find the program that you wanted again. So do be sure to take a note of the OUAC program code. It's going to make your application go much, much smoother. You then can click on the requirements tab, which will show you what is needed for that program in order to be considered for admission. So in the case of this paramedic program, you will see that English advanced functions, biology and chemistry are all considered prerequisites. That means that you must have all four of these courses in order to be considered for admission. As with every other university program, a total of six grade 12 MRU courses is needed for, for admission purposes. And the number of prerequisites does vary by program. So in the case of our paramedical program here, there are four prerequisites and the remaining two uh, grade 12 MRUs are up to the student's choice. Additional admission criteria is where you're going to see if you're going to need a supplementary form. So as you can see in the case of this particular program, there is a supplementary form. Um, these programs are known as grade plus programs. It means that in order to be considered for admission, your supplementary form and your grades will be weighted together uh, for your consideration. Other programs, if there is no additional admission criteria, are grades only programs and only your average of your top six grade 12 MRUs will be used when considering you for admission. So you can record these requirements uh, on the sheet that we gave you. There is a spot for you to do that. Down further on the same page is where you will see the language requirements. So you will see um, if you fall in the category of a student requiring an IELTS or a TOEFL test. So in the, in the case here of uh, U of T Scarborough, um, they're admitted to U of T, they may require additional English language skills training, um, and there may be different things that you will need to do there as well. So make sure that you do check, scroll all the way down uh, the page when you are researching to see if there are any language requirements for your program and what those requirements are. No problem. Okay, um, so on to the, the next part here. So we've already talked about the English requirements. You can go to the next slide, Ms. Dobbin. And that's where you can find the program website. So at the very bottom, you actually do have the option to go directly to that university's uh, program website so that you can take a look and see a little more about the program, the faculty. Another thing that students actually find quite useful when they're researching that many don't know is if you go to the actual program website, you will oftentimes see your actual course of study. So you can see which courses you will be taking in first, second, third year beyond um, to see if that if that program really is what you thought it was going to be. Sometimes going through and seeing the name of the courses you'll be taking will give you a better idea of what that program really is about. So for the basic um, admission requirements, you will have, if you do have to have a supplementary form, um, make sure that you submit those before any deadlines that are specified. The universities will normally, after you apply, contact you, and then they will ask you to create a student portal so that they can communicate with you in more detail. Uh, as part of this portal, if there are any supplementary requirements for the program, they will often post those for you as well. So for failed and repeated courses, it will also tell you on this admission site near the bottom um, what the university's policy is on failed and repeated courses um, so that you can continue, see if that is something that applies to you as well. And one last thing to take a look at um, if you are at all considering alternate pathways 
or if your first choice doesn't work out for any reason, there is the ontransfer.ca uh, search uh, site. On this site, you will be able to see any kind of transferring that you can do from college to university, from university program to university program, from university to college. So if there's ever at any point that you need to change your pathway or you change your mind or you got to your program, you realize, oh my gosh, this is not what I thought it was going to be. Um, on.ca is a good, a good resource for you to look and see what alternatives to your destination might be. And now back over to Ms. Dobbin on the actual application process. Yes, okay, so applying online, uh, this is for one-on-one -on -one applicants, which you all are. Uh, so before you actually apply, you will of course need your access codes, which we've distributed and there are a few letters still in guidance for people that did not pick them up. And in that letter, there are three important uh, codes, a temporary PIN, a school number, and a student number. So application site is at www.ouac.on.ca and this is the opening screen. So we are going to click on the undergraduate 101 uh, box and also just a reminder, uh, first of all this recording is going to be posted and also there are tutorial videos available on ouac.on.ca to help you with different steps of the application process. Oops, uh, sorry about that. Okay, uh, so first of all, when you click on that 101 box, you will see criteria and you can make sure that you are indeed a 101 applicant. And as you scroll down a bit, you will get, you will see this. And if you are ready to apply, you will go here. So this means you've done your research, you know which, uh, app, uh, which codes are you're going to use for which programs, and you're ready to go. Uh, there are the how-to videos that we, that I just mentioned, uh, access there, and also application instructions for various things, including document upload. So when you are creating an account for the first time, at the bottom, there is a place that says, create my UAC account, right there. Uh, now also do keep in mind that, uh, well, two things, as you go through this process, take your time, read things carefully, okay? Just as you will when you get your emails or other contact from the university. And email is the primary way or maybe through the uh, portal, they, they, they will set you up with a portal for their university. Those are the primary ways that they are going to be contacting you. So it's very important to check those often. So when they ask you for an email address, please do not use your TDSB email because in June, it will be, uh, It'll be terminated probably, uh, so we want we want you to be able to always have access in case there are communications passed when you graduate. And you'll be creating your username and password. We want you to use ones that are easy to remember. You are going to be recording them, and remember that they should be professional. And you will be using uh, any. By the way, anytime you apply in the future, you will be using the same login. So if you go apply to another degree later, then you'll be using the same login. Record them on your sheet. And when you create a password, there's the criteria, which you'll, again, as you read things and as you go along, you'll find this and you'll make an appropriate password. So, uh, and then you'll have to verify your email address. Uh, in order to continue. And if you do not get the verification email, you go to contact information in your application and click resend verification email. So next you're gonna be entering school uh, information about the school. And be careful, Northview Heights is in North York. Do not look for Toronto or you will not find the school. Entering the access codes, so the three codes that are in your letter. And please notice that student number is not your TDSB number, it is the number that is provided in your letter. 
So read the welcome page carefully. So as I said, as you go through these steps, take your time. You can save and go back if at some, uh, once you're, you've finished. Uh, and it's important to read the privacy information because you are going to be agreeing to it. And along the way, there are help links and also chat features on most pages. And on the top there, you can see that you're, how you're logged in, what your username is. Uh, so looking at uh, when you get into this part, uh, because you've entered your, your codes that uh, have linked you to the school information, you may find uh, your name and address and other things pre-populated. So please double check if it is pre-populated and also please double check about your legal name. It is very important that you are applying with your legal name, something that's on your, your the name that's on your passport, birth certificate or other legal ID. And if for some reason the legal name on your ID does not match what is pre-populated, please see your guidance counselor. Now, selecting your programs, you can go through the search options, or if you want a fast track like we recommend, you can just enter those UAC codes that you recorded on your research sheet. So when you enter a code, you can check on the admission requirements for the program. And uh, you are gonna be, as you choose the, uh, the programs, they will be, a number order and you can rearrange them and the universities say that they do not they do not affect uh, their offer admissions unless somewhere they they have that in their in their website or literature. So the cost for applying is $150 which covers up to three programs that you're applying to. If you want to apply to more then you can add $50 uh, cost for each additional choice. And the, you are only allowed a maximum of three programs per university. Uh, and also remember that once you have submitted your application, so that means you've paid and submitted, uh, if you do a program change, that will cost an additional $50 unless it is at the same university. And of course, you do want to do that before the January 13 deadline so that you can have equal consideration for that change. Uh, so uploading documents. So the examples of documents that you may be asked to un upload are proof of status in Canada, language proficiency, a transcript from high school grades completed outside of Ontario, and anything else they may, they may request. So uh, more questions you'll be asked, uh, and this is about your academic background. So it's important that you enter all information about courses, in, including uh, night school. So Northview is your regular school, anything completed outside of your North of Northview. So whether it's night school, summer school, private school, any grade 11 or 12 course must be reported separately at a different school. So like night, TDSB night school, for example, TDSB summer school. And then you will also see uh, your, your course and mark information that has been transmitted from TDSB. This is read only, and you will want to double check that everything is correct on here. And if you do find any errors, please contact your guidance counselor. So you're going to be reviewing and submitting your application and a verify and agree, and that will take you to the uh, payment screen. So uh, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, you're going to see the different options. Uh, credit card is preferred the and it's the fastest. And just read everything, take your time, follow the steps. Um, Ms. Dobbin, if I could just uh, jump in for a minute because I yes. did have a student experience a problem with this. So if you could just go back one, one slide. 
So before you submit your application, ladies and gentlemen, please make sure that everything is correct and you don't want to make any, any additional changes. Once you do the I verify and agree and it takes you to the payment screen, you are locked to that payment screen. So you will not be able to navigate forward or backwards or do anything else. You will actually have to call the OUAC to unlock your application at that point. Because anytime that you log in, once you have gone to the payment portion, it's going to take you directly to the payment screen and it's actually not going to allow you to navigate anywhere else. So make sure before you um, do the verify and agree portion here that everything is correct and is as you want it to be. Because once you're onto the payment screen, that's it. You're not gonna be able to make any more changes. Sorry, I just encountered no that problem. recently. Yeah, and so in particular, your program choices, because any change after that could have cost a $50 uh, charge, right? Correct. Oh, and on the charges, I have had some students that have uh, come down to guidance and noticed that some universities seem to be charging an additional fee in addition to um, the $50. So I haven't received an answer on why that is yet. I have contacted them, uh, but I have had that with more than one student. Certain universities seem to be adding their own fee to the process. Not sure what that's about yet. Um, once we have an answer that, we'll post it to the Guidance Google Classroom for you guys. I believe that Miss that is probably for some of the Marks Plus types of programs where I think they're charging a fee maybe to process a supplementary application, that kind of thing, I think. Possibly, but that's the first year we've seen this. Yes. This, this is the first year and it is. it is the supplementary application fee. So if there is a supplementary application for the program, they will be charging fees. That's what, um, that's what I got when I asked the question. Right, so that'll be paid separately as you, as they prompt you, basically. Uh, also, oh, we talked about this with the college application. So, uh, especially students who aren't used to using credit cards, uh, there's not only the credit card number that you need and the expiration date, which are on the front, but there's a three-digit code usually on the back uh, that's on the uh, the signature strip. So uh, they usually say, they usually have on this, on websites, uh, what is this if they, when they're asking for it? So um, that's what it is. Okay, so once you do, uh, you choose your method of payment and continue, we, you will receive your UAC reference number. That is a very important number. So please record it. Uh, it will be very useful for if you need to contact a university about your application and the ULAC reference number will help them find your file quickly. And you have not, you have not submitted, you have not finished your application until the uh, payment is done. So keep that in mind in terms of January 13th especially. Okay, and when you are finishing the reference number, it will begin with 2022 because of September 2022 start uh, for your studies. And record it on your reference sheet, your research sheet. So here are, this is also on the UAC website, uh, different ways to contact UAC for support. And of course, remember that they do have those help links and chat link. So to recap, grade 12 guidance Google Classroom code, don't forget to join. We have so many important announcements for our grade 12 students there. Your UAC letter, if you don't have it, get it. <laughs> Application fees, $150 for up to three programs, $50 for each additional program with a maximum of three programs at any one university. And remember switching programs after you have submitted your payment means that there could be an extra fee uh, and you'll have to withdraw the, the one, one choice. And if you're adding, you add another choice and they will not refund, of course. And yeah, and any additional, so you do wanna have all your program choices in ideally before January 13th, if you wanna be considered equally with the other applicants. Now, sometime in the spring, I see Miss Tamarku is ready to deal with that. Yes. 
Good evening, everybody. So sometime in the spring, uh, all students uh, will have heard back from their from the universities and programs that they have applied to. The latest date by which students will hear uh, an offer uh, uh, of admission uh, will be uh, May, the week of May 27th. So uh, it is, so the, So we are asking students to be very patient. So it could take up to the third week of May in order for uh, some students to hear back from the universities that they apply to. Sorry, May 27th is the deadline for that. May 27th yeah. is the deadline for that, yeah. yes. So it will, so until that date, we ask students to be patient because you will be getting, you will, you will be hearing back from universities um, from the time you apply up until that date. Some will be hearing back earlier and some will be hearing back in May. So sometime in the spring, uh, after you hear back from all the universities, uh, for those that have, where you have received a conditional offer of acceptance, uh, please, you are please log into. You, you're able to view your offers of admission on your OUAC account. So when you log in, you will be able to to see. Uh, to respond to a university offer of, of admission, click Choices or Offer, and read instructions carefully. So once you click on the offer, um, you will be able to see an accept or decline. And please, uh, you're able to, please uh, be very careful when you are making a decision as to which particular programs you want to accept or decline. If you, once you accept a program, uh, if you haven't declined another program, you are able to go back and accept another uh, program that you haven't declined yet. However, um, it, it may take uh, a few days to process and it may affect your ability to be able to be accepted in that program. So please be very, very careful and do not accept until you're absolutely sure that that's the program that you want to accept. Accept. Once you decline a program, you cannot go back and uh, re-accept it. It is. It will not be part of your um, offers anymore. So please uh, be very careful with, with these uh, choices for accept and decline. Yes, the UAC hotline reported to us that this is a very common problem that students decline an offer and then they change their mind. There's no going back. So once you uh, accept, uh, for completing the submission process, once you accept uh, an offer, you must complete the submit process in order for uh, UAC and universities to receive your changes. So once you click on accept, you must uh, please read carefully, you must review and submit in order for the universities and UAC to um, receive your response. So don't forget that very important step. Again, as I had mentioned, canceling an offer of admission, uh, if for any reason you want to cancel a particular acceptance and accept another offer of admission, um, you are able to do so. However, that particular program that you do cancel, you cannot go back uh, if you change your mind. So only cancel your previous acceptance of offer if you are 100% sure. Um, also, we, we recommend students to hear back from all of the universities uh, and programs that they um, have applied to and think carefully uh, and have those meaningful discussions with your parents and family before actually going in and accepting a particular offer of acceptance instead of flipping back and forth, okay? Because um, our, the university represent, sorry, um, the OUAC representative that we spoke to yesterday uh, mentioned that this is the most common problem amongst students. Uh, they uh, jump on an offer very quickly and then they receive another offer and then they change their mind and they cancel one um, acceptance and they offer another and they accept another only to to uh, come to the, only to realize that it was you know they want to actually accept the offer that they had canceled. So um, because you cannot go back, please, uh, wait until you hear back from all of the universities and the offers and think carefully, have a discussion with your family, and then click on submit to the program that you're absolutely sure that you want to accept. 
So I'd just like to add one thing here is that, uh, you know how we had open houses, the universities had open houses in the fall, they have open houses again in the spring. So these are typically in March, a lot of them could be in March break. And please use these opportunities, even if you don't have a decision yet from the university, please use, use these opportunities to re-examine programs and universities so that you can make that informed decision when you need to in May. So we would like students to know that all offers or remind them that all offers are conditional. When universities send out an offer of, an, uh, of admission, um, it is based on a certain, from certain criteria that will be outlined in that conditional offer of acceptance. Read the conditions carefully. Okay, it will give important information like what kind of average they would like for you to maintain in order for you to be actually accepted into that program. And also um, if there are any course specific averages and also the deadline by which you need to respond in UAC by. So usually the deadline on average in previous years, it has been June 1st. But I mean, it may change from program to program. So please read that specific last date to respond uh, very, very carefully in the conditional offer of acceptance. If you feel for any reason, particularly this happens usually in semester two, uh, if you feel once the students have heard back from several uh, universities and received several uh, conditional, conditional offers, of, offers of acceptance, if you feel that you are in jeopardy of potentially not being able to um, meet uh, a condition, um, if there's a particular course that you're trying really hard in and um, the, uh, that particular average is pulling your overall average down and you feel you might need to go to summer school to upgrade, please book an appointment with your guidance counselor as soon as possible. Ultimately, uh, we will have that meaningful discussion with the students, but ultimately it, it is the student's responsibility to contact the university and that particular program um, to, and to give them the OUAC reference number um, during that time and also to, um, to ask the university, tell, tell the university the situation that they're in and whether or not that university and program will accept an upgrade from summer school. Please note that not all universities and programs accept summer school upgrades, even though the majority do. Some programs are a little bit pickier. So um, it's very important to know whether the program that you're thinking about accepting does uh, accept a summer school upgrade. So offers do not become official until your final marks and graduation status are reviewed by the university. So as I mentioned in previous years, June 1st was the deadline that the majority of the universities uh, use in terms of the last day to uh, submit response. So um, by, by early June, uh, all students uh, must make a decision uh, to, uh, as to which program that they would like to attend in the fall. Once uh, students accept that one offer by the deadline, OUAC and that university will keep the student's record on file. On June the 30th, once final semester two final marks are uh, sent in, that uni university and the program, that university and program that the student accepted will review the student's uh, transcript and, and see whether or not they actually uh, met the conditions outlined in the conditional offer of acceptance. Remember, it is very important to note that if the student does not meet the conditions outlined in the offer of acceptance for the program that they um, submitted, that they, uh, that they agreed to, the offer will be rescinded. So uh, it's very, very important to work hard until the very end uh, of the year. Uh, because those final semester two marks do count are, and are included. Can we go to the next slide very quickly? It's also really important to um, check uh, your email regularly. Um, as was stated earlier uh, in this presentation, uh, it's very important when you're setting up your o Ontario University Application Center or o o OUAC account that you use a you set up a professional email address and uh, 
during the for the application it's very important you check that particular email address and also when you, a conditional offer of acceptance is sent to a student the university will also provide instructions for the student to set up um, a portal, a university portal, and uh, information regarding uh, additional entrance requirements like supplementary application form or portfolio requirements or auditions, whatever additional uh, entrance requirements there are will be um, in that would be communicated to the student uh, via that university email and portal. So it's very, very important and it's up to the student to check their both their personal email and their university uh, portals on a regular basis because you are responsible for any deadlines. Remember that uh, we will be having an Ontario Student Assistance Program or OSAP uh, information session on March the 2nd. Uh, OSAP applications for the 2022-23 year do not open until the spring. Uh, so March 2nd uh, is the date we will have this. It'll be an evening information session just like this from six o'clock to seven o'clock. And um, it will be a virtual presentation. And by late, uh, June or um, early July, it's very important to complete your OSAP application. When, when you're completing, in order for you to be able to complete your OSAP application, you must uh, know which program you will be uh, attending uh, in the fall. So they will ask for that specific information. However, you can go into the OSAP website now and you can do an uh, OSAP aid estimator. You can answer some of the questions they have and maybe enter some of the uh, information regarding the programs you may be interested in applying to and uh, see what kind of, uh, potentially what kind of uh, loan you may be able to uh, be granted. Again, it's only an estimator, but um, it's good to, to go in and uh, see, uh, you know, what kind of information that site will have to offer. Um, the OSAP deadline is in October, but you have to pay the tuition first and get the money from OSAP. Um, so basically, it's very important that you're not late for the OSAP. Once you determine, what if when you apply for OSAP, it's very important that you connect with the a financial aid department of the university that you will be attending in the fall. And a, a financial aid officer will then direct you with respect to uh, specific deadlines. And uh, because if you don't submit your application on time and your application is late, your money will not be ready for you in the in the uh, fall. So usually the OSAP is given, uh, the chunk is, a larger chunk is given in the fall because there's books and other kinds of incidental fees that are required um, at the beginning of the school year. And another, the second part of the OSAP loan and grant will be uh, presented uh, in second semester of your year. So it's very important that you connect with the financial aid office. Um, again, uh, for uh, it's very important also for campus visits. You know, there are uh, some fall and spring open houses. You can go to ontariouniversitiesinfo.ca and find out when some of those, or the university websites and find out when some of these campus visits are. Um, they are having, um, you know, the I believe some of the universities are having face-to-face -face, um, open houses. Uh, some may still be virtual, but it's very important to kind of get a feel for what the campus is like what the university environment is like and really um, be and ask yourself some of you know honestly some of those questions is that university for you uh, would you be more suited to a larger university would you be comfortable attending a larger university would you be more comfortable attending a smaller university what does the campus look like what does what do the libraries look like in which you will be going to and studying in so these are all really really important things that you know you won't be able to necessarily know by just by you know going into a website so actually campus visits will help you to make that important decision also um, universities have guidance counselors they call they're called academic advisors and they help the student along the way throughout their university career so it's really important and we recommend all students to know uh, to find out who their academic advisor is so that if they have questions along the way as they're completing their degree um, they will they will know who to go to for those answers so in june july please book an appointment with the academic advisor uh, for the university that you will be attending in the fall 
sorry, I just want to add about the open houses. These are great, really great opportunities, better than just the plain campus tour, because the university organizes representatives from many of their departments, many of their offices, financial aid office, uh, student support office, uh, clubs are there represented. You get to talk to students who are attending the school. So it is a really, really great way to have a lot of uh, contact and information from the university. Thank you. Can we go to the, no, the IEP? Uh, IEP, yes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. No problem. Um, if you have, if a student has an IEP, most definitely, you know, the IEP accommodations can be rolled over to uh, uh, post-secondary studies. So things like extra time or other kinds of accommodations on a student's individual education plan, um, you know, can will be considered. Uh, once you decide on which institution you are attending, you need to contact their accessibility offer uh, accessibility office and find out what is needed to proceed. So usually it. It is, a, it is a professional document like psychoeducational assessment that is required and this will be reviewed by an officer at the accessibility office um, and they will then determine um, if your uh, report uh, is uh, valid and if they will accept it. Once you are accepted, um, we, they will book an appointment with you and they will go over and discuss the kinds of accommodations that you are entitled to in post-secondary and how you can access these. So I highly recommend those individuals who do have an IEP to, you know, contact the accessibility office and, um, you know, having those accommodations um, throughout uh, post-secondary will undoubtedly be uh, beneficial. Um, if you're applying to universities outside of Ontario, which many of our students do, many of our students apply to universities in Ontario and outside. So if you're looking at applying to those schools, it's important that you go to the website of that school and see what the criteria is to apply to that particular post-secondary institution. Uh, they may have different uh, application instructions and deadlines um, and also uh, make, you know, they may also require you to send a transcript from the school. So um, please uh, go into that school's website and read about it. And if you have any uh, additional questions, please, uh, again, book an appointment with your guidance counselor and we would be happy to discuss your interest in further detail. The Youth and Mental Health Association uh, is a nonprofit organization and they do and what they're holding at Ontario University's 101 question and answer um, with students who are uh, with current uh, university students who were high school students not too long ago. This will give an opportunity for uh, current uh, high school students to interact with um, secondary school students and ask questions and, you know, hear from their perspective as to what um, university life is like, what are some of the challenges that they faced, what, what, what were some of the things that they wish they knew before they applied, so, um, or before they attended university. So I think this will be a very, very useful information session. It'll be held on Saturday, November 27th at 5 p.m. It, it will be via Zoom. And uh, there is a sign up. So the sign up information and everything has been included in the guidance Google Classroom. So um, please go into that site and sign up and join. I think that that will, um, you know, it's open to all uh, high school students and it'll give them an opportunity to ask university students uh, any questions that they may have. We highly encourage this. So uh, we've come to an end at, uh, of our university information session. We hope that everybody found this session informative. Again, uh, the Northview guidance team um, strives to um, and you know, keep our students and school community, parents and guardians informed uh, during each step of the way throughout the school year. Uh, we highly encourage students to join the grade 12 guidance Google Classroom and the address is there. Um, it's also posted outside of our guidance store. If you haven't joined already, please join because we do post all important information there. 
And uh, again, we encourage parents guardians also to um, email your student, your child's guidance counselor. If you have any questions that, that you would like to ask us, we are accessible and uh, we, we would love to, to meet everybody. So we hope that, um, and again, students, if for any reason you haven't had your questions answered uh, again, or you think about a question later on, uh, please book an appointment and uh, let's go through uh, some of the questions that you have. Um, are there any questions in the chat, Ms. Allison, that we haven't had a chance to address yet? Yes, there's a question about identifying whether or not they are attending a summer school program on their application, specifically the e-learning virtual school. Mm -hmm. I believe that the main thing is, is in the application, the, the OUAC wants you to identify your schools that you attend during day school. The TDSB will be transferring all your marks over and it will be identified as whether it was taken in day school, night school or um, summer school. So I wouldn't worry too much for all of you who keep asking about your summer school marks that you took last year. So really and truly make sure that you're identifying all day school um, day schools that you have attended and also any private schools that you've attended. North or TDSB will transfer all your marks that are on your transcript from the TDSB and private schools will need to identify and add your private school marks. And also keep in mind that the first transmission has already been sent. So once you have actually logged into your account and you've selected Northview as a school, you will actually see the transcript that's already there. Uh, and you can see if those marks have in fact transferred already, because if you've completed them in the summer, those marks should be there. So if you have any concerns when you first uh, get into your application, you first look at your courses, if anything is missing, um, you can book an appointment with your guidance counselor and we'll take a look at it together. But anything that you have completed in TDSB should already be in, the, uh, in your transcript portion once you identify Northview as your school. And the other thing that I wanted to address because it came up in the chat uh, earlier and it's something that comes up in uh, guidance all the time is this, this idea of early admissions. Um, there's a lot of misconception around early admission and what it is. First of all, you cannot apply to early admission as a high school student. So if a university is to consider you earlier than May when the bulk of the applicants actually are contacted, they will do that based on their own criteria. So the way that I like to explain to students is there's basically three admission cycles. The first one will happen shortly after the final marks are sent in January. And generally any students that will receive offers after that first round are students who have extremely strong um, transcripts. So, you know, extremely high averages or students that have already completed a grade 12, either in the summer or in grade 11. So they actually have a final mark to post to the university. It's important to note that this cycle is the smallest cycle. So the fewest number of offers actually will go out in this first cycle. The vast majority of the offers do not go out until the main cycle. And that is the one that will happen after your midterm grades are posted in semester two. So the bulk of students will not hear anything from their program until May. The last cycle is then reserved for any students who are on a waiting list um, or who added their courses after the February deadline or made changes after the February deadline. January and those 13th. will generally go out in, um, sorry, at January deadline. I, I've done too many how to apply to college videos, mm -hmm. obviously, um, after the January deadline. So that third round is for those students and that will generally happen in July. But the vast majority of you will not hear anything from the university until May. And we know that's very stressful. Uh, but unfortunately, that is the way it is, so do not panic. Also, if on your transcript and the information that came from TDSB, you notice that your semester two courses have changed, but you, you've changed them with your guidance counselor, but it's not showing on EWAC yet, keep in mind that at the next, at the next transmission, that will be updated, so you, don't, you do not need to do anything. 
Uh, one last question it, uh, that's common or has been asked more than once is about community hours. Um, if you are completing your community hours at 20, which is the this year's requirement, the regular um, requirement is 40. So we have to waive the remaining 20. We don't do that until June. So that will mean that it will say no until the June transmission. So just don't worry. Uh, it will. It should not affect any of your applications that it says no, so long as you graduate at the end of the year. So um, this brings us to the end of our how to apply to university information session. Again, we hope that uh, you, you a lot of many of your answers questions were answered, and we hope that you found this information session useful. Have a great evening.